Hey y'all, Chelsea and Danny here. Enjoy this episode of Today's Homeowner here on YouTube. This week we're in Southern California where we're going to give you some great ideas for your outdoor living space. Today's Homeowner with Danny Lipford. Real projects for real homeowners with real solutions. Information and inspiration on improving your home from professional remodeler Danny Lipford. With great weather and views like this, you can see why so many homeowners in Southern California really put a premium on their outdoor living space. So what a great area to give you some great tips that you can use around your home. Now we'll look at a way that you can take a tired old concrete slab that may be serving as your patio now and really give it an exotic look. We'll also look at a number of outdoor lighting tips and we'll show you some accessories that you'll just have to have at your home. Stay with us. They really look like they're having fun. Now most outdoor entertainment areas start with some type of surface. Now it may be an elevated deck area or could be a concrete slab like we have here around the swimming pool. Now concrete's great for this type of surface because it's fairly inexpensive, it's easy to have installed and it's very durable. The problem is it's not very attractive, especially after it ages. Now these homeowners have tried to apply a paint to the surface of this slab that certainly improved it for a while, but it's starting to wear off. Now other alternatives to completely clean the slab well, stain it, maybe a few score joints will help, but you really have to start with a blemish free slab in order to make that look good. Now recently we found a product that can completely change the look of concrete and it's really a great do it yourselfer project. Now this patio surface looks great now, but a few days ago it didn't look so great and here to tell us about the transformation is Paul Weirman. Yeah, Danny, this was a uh, slab that we had here that uh, was very discolored and weathered, and uh, we had a crack running down this slab, which you can't see, about a half inch rise, and we filled it with standard filling material, and then we put our product Aronite over it to create this stone-like uh, look. Now, now, as far as the product, um, what is it made of? I mean, it certainly looks like a masonry product. Yeah, uh, basically it's a copolymer water-based binder with ground-up rock or aggregate in it uh, with some magic. What about the do-it-yourselfer? It sounds like it may be a little hard to put on. Uh, no, this is very forgiving for the do-it-yourselfer. Uh, I always jokingly say a, a mistake becomes a feature. There you go, especially with something like this. With stone, very simple. And basically sure. our, our system is we take uh, our base coat material and create a grout color. And you can use any water-based tints for that grout color. Mm -hmm. And we go ahead and let that dry after you apply it with a trowel. And uh, then you put tape down. We have special tape for this that sticks uh, doesn't allow bleeding. Mm -hmm. And then we go ahead and put our top product on it, which is our limestone product, sandstone product, or terracotta. I see. And uh, then we go ahead and let that dry, pull our tape, and sand it. And when you sand it, it the magic happens. I you see. Know, it gets aged and just looks beautiful. Then we put our sealer on it, our water-based sealer. And uh, basically this patio is very durable because of the stone in it. And also because we don't have any cement in our product, it's flexible okay. and, and, and very forgiving in that, in that section. So you can go over wood. Well, it certainly has a lot of characters. Hard to believe that this is only just a few days old. Uh, what about uh, using it on driveways? I see a lot of ugly driveways. Oh, yeah. This product, uh, especially our Sydney White, goes very well on uh, asphalt driveways and also on, on concrete driveways. And uh, with our sealers, it works very nice. And also there's products out there for tire pull-up, tire impressions and things uh -huh. that uh -huh. you could put on it too as well. Uh, but basically, uh, you can also use the product on garden, garden ornaments like fountains and like uh, pots, pottery. I see. That goes very well in that. If you've got old, tired pots out there, mm -hmm. works well. Yeah, I see right behind us here. That's a great example there of uh, how just a regular concrete fountain really looks nice with using that. Um, what are some of the other areas? What about uh, stucco walls? Oh, yeah, stucco walls, we're finding, that, uh, we're finding a, a, a good application on stucco walls because we don't have any cement. It's more flexible, so we're less to cracking, uh -huh. and it'll stick to that wall. Okay. And, and you can color coat. Okay. Well, with it being a do-it-yourselfer type product, what about the cost of the materials itself? Uh, that's the good news. The cost is a dollar fifty to two dollars, basically, and uh, very affordable for the homeowner. And that's per square foot. Per square foot. All right, that's great. That's not bad at all. And I know a lot of driveways, patios, and other surfaces that could really use this. Get ready to review your fix-it list as Danny and home repair expert Joe Truini show you this week's simple solution. Brought to you by DuPont Tyvek. Build it once, build it right. 
Joe and I are about to install an 8 inch ceramic tile in this existing bathroom, laying the tile over the vinyl floor that's on a slab. It's a great way to go, but the key to a great looking ceramic tile floor is the proper layout with good square lines. Joe has a way of obtaining these square lines based on an ancient mathematical theory that you may have learned in 8th grade geometry class. That's right, Danny. You might remember the Pythagorean theorem which is based on a relationship between the numbers 3, 4, and 5. So what we did here is I snapped a line 8 inches off the tub wall and marked it 4 feet out. You'll see that mark on the piece of tape. Okay. And then I'm gonna, I taped down the chalk line on my starting point and I put a masking tape flag on the line itself exactly 3 feet from that starting point. Okay, so you have the 3 foot, you have the 4 foot, now here, I guess and here we have Here comes five the foot. 5, right. Okay. This is the relationship between the numbers. So now all I need to do to get a perfectly straight and square layout line is you hold that right on the zero and okay. I'll line up the three foot with the five foot mark on the tape which is right about there. Okay. Now snap this line and you've got two lines that are perfectly square at 90 degrees. Well you really can't rely on the walls of most houses to be square. No, in this case the wall and the tub were out of square by about an inch. And you also can't use a framing square because it's just too short and it's not accurate over this great distance we have here. Now with a larger distance, I guess you could just uh, increase the numbers. Yeah, just use the same multiples. Here we use 3, 4, 5, but 6, 8, and 10 would be the same for laying out like a deck or any larger project. Well, I knew that geometry class would come in handy. It would sooner or later. If you have an outdoor living area as nice as this, you don't want to stop enjoying it just because the sun went down. Well, lighting is the obvious solution to that. You can put a floodlight on the edge of your house and shine up the whole area, but it's not very attractive and you're certainly not going to like what it does to your power bill. Now choosing the right landscape lighting for your home is a very individual and subjective decision. Now to help you with those decisions, we talked with Phil Kinzer just recently, who's a landscape lighting expert, to give you some great tips. Well, Phil, I'm just seeing so much growing interest in landscape lighting these days. What's going on with all that? Well, Danny, there, there is a lot of interest, and I think part of it is the fact, especially here in Southern California, energy costs are, are so high, and sometimes it's not non-existent, in fact, uh, that low-voltage lighting is very attractive, and one of the hottest areas right now has been solar lighting, because that doesn't use any energy. Now, I've seen some solar lights <laughs> around the yard sometimes, and uh, you really don't get much light out of them in the years past. You're right. Back a few years ago was, uh, was a product I think we'd all be embarrassed to have, but right now they are, are greatly improved. It's still just accent lighting, and you have to count on the sun to be out uh, uh, for you to have light during the day, but uh, they, they're much improved. Uh, the product uh, that we have now is 30% brighter than the product we had uh, last year, and it's, gonna, it's just going to continue to improve. Well, technology is certainly helping us in a lot of different areas around well, the home, that's for so sure. I guess that's one good example. Now, of course, um, the homeowners are trying out some of the solar lights here, and uh, this is kind of a perfect application for it here, I guess. Yeah, there's, there's really three reasons why people use lighting. Uh, beauty, safety security here's a perfect security or safety application rather mm -hmm. you put this along the step that you have here so somebody wouldn't trip going up here and really it's, it's almost that simple you'd want to dig the hole so that's in a little bit further but that's that's all you have to do to uh, to install a solar light just put it in the ground now another thing with landscape lighting that's amaze amazes me is that there's so much to choose from now there used to be just two or three styles now you go to the home center and it's everywhere it's gotten to be a, a real fashion business uh, we probably have uh, 40 to 50 different style fixtures now so everybody can can tailor their their lighting needs to just what what they like for their architecture mm -hmm. in fact we we see right here this uh, this particular homeowner has had this wall wash with this uh, with this light uh, kind of shows up the lattice work, shows up the vines, and it's really, with the shadows and everything, this is really attractive at night. But there's two or three uh, different styles that you could use for this. There's some other floodlights, a little narrower spot, a little narrower flood, so there's a lot of different styles for that. Uh, and in lighting in general, there, uh, as I say, there's all kinds of styles. You, we go from, uh, from tier lights, we go to uh, deck lights, we go to tabletop lights, and several of them are, are virtually used in many different ways. So there's, uh, there, we even have a light that floats in a pool. Okay, great. And, and all that is, of course, solar powered. Yes, it yeah, is. That's great. Well, you know, one of the things I love to see in effect is um, when you have a feature tree in the yard where you may have an up light or a light up in the tree, that's always a nice effect. Well, you couldn't find a better application than right behind us, this tree right here with that, uh, with the white bark oh. and the white trunk, lighting uh, either shining up into those leaves or even lighting up in the tree would cast some great shadows. That's a perfect application for lighting. Yeah, I can see where it would be now, but there's so many options. If a homeowner has no lights in their yard and they would really like to create that ambience in their, in their yard, um, how do they even start trying to figure it out? 
really the easiest way is pretty simple. Walk around your yard at night with a flashlight. Kind of pick out a couple of places where you think lighting would work well. Shine the, shine the flashlight up into the trees, into the bushes, along a walk, along your driveway, and you really kind of get a good feel of, uh, of what the lighting can do. And the nice part about either low voltage or solar is if you can move it around. You might put it out there and you look at it at night and you don't really care for, uh, where it is, you just move it. That's, it, that's true, and uh, of course sometimes too much light is not really what you want in a situation like that. No, absolutely not. You can overlight. I always say start off small and see what you can do. What you want your lighting to do is uh, one of our favorite uh, terms is you want lighting to welcome your friends and discourage intruders, and that's what uh, a good lighting scheme can do. Wow, that's some great information, Phil. Now let's join Danny at the Home Center to check out the best new products. Brought to you by The Home Depot. It is really tough keeping up with all the new tools they introduce every year. And over the last few years, we've heard a lot about laser lines and laser levels. Now, there's a lot of ways those little red dots and red lines can help you with your home improvement projects. But most of the time, these laser line, laser level tools are very expensive. Not anymore. American Tools introducing the straight line, which retails for around $60. And there's a lot of ways you can use this around your house. Let me give you a couple examples. Let's say you're installing chair rail in your dining room and you need that nice level line that you used to get by using a chalk line. But it's kind of hard to paint around a chalk line. Let me show you how this can work. First of all, it has little prongs that allow you to push it right into the wall. You can just attach it just like that. Then you turn on the laser and you have the line that you need in order to install the chair rail. It can also be used on a wallpaper border or almost anything you want to keep nice and level. Another application, installing ceramic tile. If you use a chalk line, you spread adhesive, you're going to cover up your chalk line. Here, you can position this right on the floor and you have the line that will project right over the adhesive so that you keep your ceramic nice and straight. Also, for that $60, it includes a little carrying case that'll go right on your belt. And these are just a couple of examples of how you can use this, but I'll bet if you buy one, you'll find a number of other uses. Now these are some of the solar lights that Phil had mentioned earlier. They're small, they're lightweight, and they're perfect to provide that subtle lighting you may want out on your patio table. Now this one's kind of cool because it actually floats. So if you have a spa or a pool or a pond in your yard, then you actually can add that lighting element right into the water itself. Now that brings us to another thing that we need to consider when you're talking about your outdoor living space. Now patio accessories in the past would consist of a small redwood patio table, a little small charcoal grill, and maybe a few folding chairs. Nowadays, the options are so plentiful, there's just about as much to choose from for the outside of your living area as there is for the inside of your house. Now, recently, we spoke with Jeff Black, who's in the outdoor furnishing business, who's got some great information to get us up to date on what's available. Well, I just love this patio furniture, and even the place settings look nice. Now, Jeff, when a homeowner's picking out patio furniture, what mm -hmm. are some of the things they need to consider? Well, they want to consider quality, durability, and comfort. Uh -huh. uh, a set like this, what's nice about it, this is all powder-coated aluminum, which is a baked-on finish that won't come off, and being aluminum, you don't have to worry about it rusting. Mm -hmm. Another nice thing is the covering here, this is all vinyl, so suntan lotion or food won't stain it. For cleanup, you just simply hose this stuff off. Yeah, that's great. Now, what about some of the uh, cushion type? I see a lot of the right. deep seating type of uh, furniture. Uh, right, people are deep wanting seating to be is very popular uh -huh. because it gives you living room comfort that can work outdoors. I see. And again, most of that is aluminum with cushions that can stand up to up being outdoor. Now, a lot of homeowners want wicker, but uh, I've right. never seen wicker really hold up very well. Right. Well, it doesn't, but there is a category of wicker called all-weather wicker, and what it is is the wicker is actually made out of resin similar to this vinyl here huh. and the frame is aluminum even oh, okay. though you can't see it because it's covered by the wicker but the nice thing is it is very durable and once again you can just hose it off for cleanup. Yeah so that makes a lot of sense making sure that you get something that'll hold up out in the weather. Right. Now um, speaking of the weather a lot of homeowners are realizing they can get a lot more time that they can use their outdoor patio areas if they have just a little bit of heat. That's right. important in Southern California. You've got that taken care right. of. Right, we've got a product here, a patio heater, and what's nice is it throws out about a 20-foot circle of heat, and it's just run by a propane tank, which will last from 12 to, four, 12 to 15 hours, 
and it just takes the chill off the night. Yeah, sometimes that's all you need is just that little bit of heat. Exactly. Uh, now, um, of course, uh, shade cover is very important. Uh, these right. homeowners have a you know permanent patio cover, but right. well, what's the situation? Uh, what can you do if you if you don't have something right. like this? Well, there's this is real nice, but there is other alternatives. There's other shade products on the market. You know, of course, we have umbrellas. Mm -hmm. uh, some new things on the market are what's called a free arm umbrella, which is a bigger umbrella that reaches up and over that has a base on the ground uh -huh. that doesn't have to go through a table. Oh, okay. And then we also have retractable, electric retractable awnings, which would mount to the side of the house and literally open and close and be about the size of this patio Yeah, and cover. I've seen those. Those are real convenient in a right. lot of situations where maybe space is a concern or you really can't build something permanent. Push a button, right. you've got the shade, push another. Right. And, and most of them don't leg. need any kind of support legs. They just simply mount to the house and free arm them themselves out. Yeah, that's perfect. Well, if you're going to have an outdoor living space, you've got to have a grill. And uh, these homeowners have uh, done it right here. Right, this is about the highest end grill that you can possibly have. And it's got a rotisserie, it's got a built-in wood chip smoker, it's got side burners, it's got storage drawers. Uh, it's got pretty much everything you would want for an outdoor kitchen. And I guess there's a few more uh, modest approaches. Than right, this. there is st other barbecues that will do these same functions for a lot less than this, something like this would run. Okay, and uh, this is always a good design feature to have some type of surrounding countertop. Of course, this is all granite here, and right. uh, this even has a little area that you could uh, actually put a few bar stools exactly. out here. Exactly. Just like in your kitchen inside, you'd want counter space to put your food out and serve from, and that's what something like this provides you okay. with. Well, there's a lot of options when you're talking about uh, patio accessories and that type of thing. Right, we can go on and on with it. Okay, great. Well, Jeff, thanks for showing us around here. Now let's go outside for Around the Yard, lawn and garden tips you can use, straight from the experts. Now if you have an area in your yard where you just can't get anything to grow, it could be a result of too much water or too little water, maybe too much sunshine or too little sunshine. Uh, Danny, it can also be the soil. Of course. You have the pH of the soil, which you have to bear in mind. And on the scale for pH, it goes from 1 to 14, with 1 being the most acidic and 14 being the most alkaline. Now you can test this yourself with several testers that are available at the home center or garden center. And it uh, gives you a pretty good idea of what the pH level of your soil is. But if you want a more exhaustive study, consider going to your county extension service and they can provide you the containers you need to take the sample. Now to take the sample, go to six different areas of your yard, dig down about six inches, take your sample from six inches down, then mix the six samples together in a clean container and then put all of the soil together and you're ready to send it off to have it evaluated. What they will be looking at is not only the pH level, but the nutrient level of the different things in the garden. So they're going to give you a very good rundown of what you can add to the soil. But the critical thing about the pH, Danny, is that it depends on what you want to grow. If you want to put grass down, then you're going to need to have pH that's a little bit more alkaline. Whereas if you want to grow a really beautiful bed of azaleas, you've got to have it more acidic. So if you take this time, find out exactly what you need to put in your soil, right. then you won't have this problem anymore. You know, I always like to say that the home doesn't end at the back door. It really extends out into your backyard. Now, this week, we've looked at a number of ways that you can enhance your backyard. Maybe you've got the old, tired concrete patio. Well, we've shown you a way that you can really enhance that and make it look great. Or you may want to really provide that atmosphere outside with landscape lighting. There's so many options there, and it's a great do-it-yourselfer project. Or you may want to go ahead and create your own personal outdoor kitchen area. That's a lot of fun to get out and grill everything that you may like and you can see it's very simple to be able to provide that area. But no matter what you do, look at what you have available, enhance it, and make your outdoor living area as comfortable as your indoor living area. You'll have a lot of fun all year long. I hope we've been able to give you some great ideas and I hope you'll be back with us next week here on the show. I'm Danny Lifford. We'll see you next week. Hey, thanks for watching this episode of Today's Homeowner. And don't forget to comment, like, and hit the bell icon so that we can notify you when new videos are posted. And don't go anywhere. Click around and continue the home improving fun.